Good morning. Happy Easter. Thank you. We are certainly glad that you have joined us this morning on this uh, most sacred of days. A couple of announcements I'd like to bring you to your attention first. Um, if you bought an Easter lily, you are free to take it home after the service. Um, and I apologize, there should be something in your bulletin that lists uh, uh, who gave and who gave in memory and honor of, of people. So that was accidentally left out. It'll be in there next week. I do apologize for that. But if you bought an Easter lily, please take one home uh, after the service today. I'd like to remind you that there is a uh, flower chart if you would like to give flowers. They don't have to look like this every Sunday. If you would like to uh, give flowers for a Sunday, uh, right down the bottom of the steps, right outside of the uh, parlor, there is a, a sign-up sheet for flowers. Um, there's plenty of room if you would like to do that. Uh, that's all I got. It's a good day. Let's get to it. Friends, let us uh, prepare our hearts and minds for worship. <laughs> Please join me in our call to worship, which is in your bulletin or on your screen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. This is the good news we have received, in which we stand and by which we are saved, that Christ died for our sins and was buried and rose again on the third day. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The tomb is empty. The enemy of death is destroyed. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. He appeared to Peter and to the twelve and to many faithful witnesses. At last he came to us that we might come to believe and proclaim this good news to the world. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Do not be afraid. Jesus is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Friends, let us pray. God of salvation, you have rolled the stone away and the tomb is empty. Nothing can defeat your love for humankind. The night is past and with dawn comes new creation. Christ is risen to bring us new life. We herald with gladness your anointing of Jesus 
and rejoice in your promised redemption from sin. Hear our shouts of glad adoration as we enter the courtyard of your redeeming grace. In the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Friends, if you're able, I invite you to stand as we all sing hymn number 232. This is a day of celebration, and nothing should prevent us from lifting our voices in praising God. We must not hide the things we have done or failed to do, the things that do not imitate the perfect love of Christ. We must not let them fester or stifle our joy. Therefore, let us bring them before God in confession this morning. First, we will pray together the prayer of confession in our bulletin. Followed by silent prayer. Let us pray together. Living God, we confess that we look for the living among the dead. You send Jesus on ahead of us, but we stay behind studying the tomb. You reveal to us your heavenly glory, but we set our minds on earthly things. Forgive us. Give us new life. Send us forth to share the gospel with your words and deeds, proclaiming the life that death cannot destroy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Amen. The Lord is alive. The risen Lord destroys death, conquers sin, and wipes away all our shame. Friends, this morning, hear and believe in the good news of the gospel. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Looking all nice in your clothes, new clothes, pretty clothes, chilling clothes. Britain, I'm going to have to borrow those, shil- those pants sometime, okay? Cover- well, I thought you were giving me gum. I was like, what is wrong with you? It's just a sticker. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. You're froggy. All right, so what is today? Somebody tell me why we have Easter. You're close. Right. But he couldn't rise unless he was crucified. So you're both right. But right. Yes, yes. Uh, they treated Jesus horribly. And they, uh, they, they killed him and hung him on a cross. And it was terrible. And it was terrible. And everybody thought that was the end. But Jesus has said, I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back. And three days later, on this day... He came back. They went to the tomb, and he wasn't there. He was already up, and he was already gone. So that's why we celebrate this day, to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. For some of you who are smaller, that might be a big word, resurrection. For some of you who are older, it still might be a tough word, Hank. Um, But that's what it means, that Jesus came back to life, and Jesus goes ahead of us. So we need not be afraid anytime we go somewhere new, because guess what? Jesus is already there ahead of us, waiting on us, Okay? That's what resurrection means, that Jesus is back, and he'll always be where we need him to be. All right, let's say a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this day, for loving us in every way. Help us to love and not to fuss, because we know that you love us. Amen. Thank you, guys. can't make up your mind, can you? Before we turn to God's word and scripture, let us first pray. Almighty God, by the power of your spirit, roll away the stone and reveal to us your word of life. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Today's Old Testament scripture comes from Psalm 118, 1 and 2, and also 14 through 24. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has, come my, he has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand has lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die but live, and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. 
This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. This is the word of the Lord. You guys are good. Thank you. Continue our reading in the New Testament with the Gospel of Mark. This is uh, Mark's version of the resurrection of Jesus. I'll be reading from chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. Friends, as I read, I invite you to uh, hear God's word as it comes to you today. When the Sabbath was over... Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. But he has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I don't uh, know if you heard or you, or, or you read about it, but... Uh, there was a uh, break-in down at the police station down here. They stole all the toilets and all of the urinals. They, they have no clue who did it. They posted a statement, though, that said that uh, they have absolutely nothing to go on. <laughs> See, because now they can't go to the bathroom. So, <laughs> The 
The resurrection story in the Gospel of Mark is very much like that. Mark does not give us very much to go on. As a matter of fact, it seems to end right in in mid-sentence. I mean, what kind of ending to the Gospel has it where they fled in terror? That was it. That's it. There is more after that, but uh, everyone believes that um, that was added later because the, the ending just wasn't, wasn't very satisfying. Jesus wasn't even there. They got up. They fled in terror. It was like it was, they stopped in mid-sentence. I was actually um, visiting someone who was uh, in their last days of their life, and they knew that it, uh, it was coming and it was uh, imminent and it would happen any day. And uh, as I was talking to them, they said, um, there's one thing that's very important to me that I want you to say. And they repeated that a couple of times. This is very important. And I want you to say this. And there was nothing. Nothing. They were just asleep. Don't worry. They didn't die. They were just asleep. But that's kind of the way the gospel of Mark ends, right? When something's very important and all of a sudden it just, it just stops. It just stops. But there's one thing I want to point out to you about this story. The way that Mark has it. Because, again, Jesus is not even in his own resurrection story. Why? Because he has gone ahead of them to Galilee. That is what the angel tells them. But go tell his disciples that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will meet him, just as he told you. For Mark, the resurrected Jesus is not so much as being with you as being ahead of you. Jesus had gone to Galilee. He had told them before, in the chapters before this, he would meet them in Galilee. Why did he meet them in Galilee? Because that's where Jesus did all of his ministry in the Gospel of Mark. That's where he healed people. That's where he did miracles. That's where he preached. That's where he took care of people. That's where the most of Jesus' ministry was gone, in Galilee. And Jesus has gone back ahead of them to Galilee to do more ministry. Come to Galilee, he tells them, because he's already there. See, that's what resurrection is all about. It's about bringing new life. It's about Jesus already being where we're going. In life, we must go to some hard places and do some hard things, and we think that Jesus is with us, and he is, but through the resurrected, Jesus is already there waiting on us, saying, come on, it's okay. I'm here, and I'll always be with you. Jesus goes ahead of us. Wherever we go in life, whatever we do, Jesus is already there. That's comforting to me to think whatever I face in life, Jesus is already there. And the worst thing that we have is death, and Jesus is already there. And already defeated that. So if Jesus is already in, in, in death and defeated that, there is no place, no place that we can go that Jesus is not already there. That's the good news of the resurrection, my friends. Jesus is already there. Whether it's somewhere we want to go, whether it's somewhere we don't want to go, whether it's somewhere fun or whether it's somewhere hard, Jesus is there. He's gone ahead of you. To Galilee. Join him in Galilee. That's good news. Jesus is already there. He's already there. There was a family who uh, had a fire in their house. And uh, the father went upstairs to the children's bedroom and grabbed the 18-month-old and carried him and was dragging their four-year-old behind him. And the four-year-old realized that he'd forgotten his teddy bear, so he broke loose from his father and went and got his teddy bear. And the dad, in all the flames and fury, didn't really realize it and got downstairs and couldn't find his four-year-old son. 
he was trapped up in the room and he couldn't get down. And he was yelling, Dad, Dad, help me, help me. And Dad says, I'm right here. Jump, I'm right here. And the boy says, but Dad, Dad, I can't see you. And the dad says, I can see you. Jump. Christ is there. Christ can see us. That's good news, people. Nowhere, there is nowhere that you will go that not only will Jesus be with you, but Jesus will beat you there and be there waiting. He's waiting in Galilee for us to come to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to comfort the bereaving, to heal the sick. He's waiting, calling us. I'm here and I'm ready. Come. Come. Friends, the resurrected Christ is alive and active in the world. Out there ahead of us, waiting on us to get there with him. So go boldly. Go boldly, go confidently. Go with Christ. And he'll already be there. So that's good news. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Quick one today. How many times can you say he's alive and he's risen, huh? Friends, I invite you to uh, stand if you're able and let us all sing hymn number 233. I invite you to remain standing and let us all affirm we believe. Please join me in the affirmation of faith that is in our bulletin or on your screen. What does it mean that on the third day Jesus rose again from the dead? That our Lord could not be held by the power of death. Having died on the cross, he appeared to his followers, triumphant from the grave in a new exalted kind of life. In showing them his hands and his feet, the one who was crucified revealed himself to them as Savior and Savior. Please be seated.
As Jesus gave himself fully for us and then appeared to the disciples bringing peace, so let us now bring wholeness and healing to others through our tithes and offerings. thanksgiving as printed in your bulletin or on your screen. God, God by your, your grace, accept the fruit of our labor and the offering of our lives in union with our risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, this table has been prepared for all of us, for this is God's table. It's not our table. And through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, this table brings us strength. This table brings us courage. This table reminds us that where we are, Christ is with us, and Christ is before us, not just anyone but someone who has given their life so we may have life. So we come to this table this morning remembering what it costs for Jesus for us to have life. But we also come celebrating, celebrating the fact that death has no power over us anymore because of what Christ did. So come to the table this morning. Be fed, be nourished, and remember what Christ has done and what Christ is doing 
and what Christ will always do for us. Let us pray. In the blessed hope of the resurrection, we pray to the Lord of endless life, saying, By your grace, O God, raise us from death to life. Life Life-giving God, we pray for the church. Let us be witnesses to the good news of this day, that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and that his love and life are extended to all. By your grace, O God, raise us from death to life. Life-giving God, we pray for the world. Destroy the shroud of death and destruction that is cast over the nations and peoples of earth. Spread out your feast of plenty and peace for all. By your your grace, O God, raise us from death to life. Life Life-giving God, we pray for this community. Help us to proclaim your message of reconciliation, that you show no partiality, welcoming all who trust in you and call on your name. By your grace, O God, raise us from death to life. Life Life-giving God, we pray for loved ones. Let your steadfast love surround those who suffer. Uphold them with your mighty, merciful hand and open for them the gates of healing and joy. By your grace, O God, raise us from death to life. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this as our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine. That the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name. That we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection. When with the redeemed of all ages, we will feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, eternal God, now and forever. It is in the name of the risen Lord Jesus Christ we offer this prayer today. And now hear us all pray the prayer together Jesus taught by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of Jesus' arrest, he sat at tables with his disciples, and he took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it. And he said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do so in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all you, and do so. In remembrance of me. For every time we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again. Friend, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our elders will pass out each element. You will receive bread first. When you receive the bread, you may go ahead and partake of it. And then you will receive the cup. When you receive the cup, you may go ahead and partake of it. Friends, this is a feast that is prepared for you.
Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread and life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, if you're able, I invite you to stand as we sing our concluding hymn, number 611. Friends, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And you will not find him in the graveyard. You will find him out in the world, ahead of you, waiting on you. So go leave from this place. Go find him. Go join him. And go spread the love of God. Now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and for all the days to come. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. peace.